Thank you for joining me on this video. Thank you for keeping me company and thank you for your interest in the subject of pests when it comes to orchids. I can tell you straight away that I don't want to overwhelm anybody. I also want to put out a trigger warning because some of the footage can be a little bit grotesque, make you kind of squeamish. One thing that we have to deal with when we grow plants let's just stick with orchids, is that we do come across a lot of pests and we want to make sure that our orchids do not succumb to any kind of infestation. But one thing is to stumble across the pests yourself and that'll make you squeamish. And another thing is to see images pop up at random and you're totally unprepared. Yeah, I want to avoid that. So I want you to know that in this video, there will be some footage that some may find disturbing and not as pleasant. So I would just want to put that out there. But the subject of pests has to be backed up by some images just to give a visual of what to look out for and be prepared to know what you're looking at. This can be quite lengthy. I don't know how long I'm going to be talking, but in the event that it may sound all very overwhelming, the dangers of pests in our orchids, I'm gonna put it right out there, right at the beginning, that everything I show you, everything I talk about can be dealt with one thing. In my experience in the year of 2021, if you are armed with garlic infused alcohol, everything that's gonna follow from here on in is easily dealt with and it shouldn't freak you out if you're considering an orchid collection, if you want to get into the hobby, or if you are already in the hobby and you have a whole arsenal of insecticide and pesticide in your cupboard and nothing seems to work. So the good news is garlic infused alcohol is honestly, in my opinion, a one-stop shop to prevent pests from getting out of hand. And I'm talking all the pests that I mention from here on in. I may not cover all the pests that are worldwide around when it comes to orchids, but I'm going to touch on the ones that most of us worldwide have to deal with. So there is no ranking and there is no order of the worst to the best. <laughs> pests are pests. I don't think there's a better pest or a worse pest. Some are easier to eradicate, but again, don't worry about it. Get yourself garlic infused alcohol. I'm going to leave a card in this video, a link of the video with the recipe in the description and everything else is a breeze. I'm gonna show you some examples of the pests as well as what symptoms to look out for. And if you cannot see the pest, I'll show you some images of what they leave behind so that next time you know what you're up against. So let's get going. Oh, by the way, I'm also gonna add, for me, a pest is anything that is detrimental to my orchid. That includes mold or let's say a fungus. It could even be a puppy, which of course cannot be eradicated by garlic infused alcohol, but yes, Anything that is a danger to my orchids is a pest, but let's go to the critters, like the real critters, okay? So let's start with scale. These guys, small, white, I don't know why the world needs scale. I honestly do not understand how this creation even serves a purpose because if there were predators around that would feed off the scale, we wouldn't have an excessive population of these guys. But scale is a problem, of course, for our orchids. So what you need to look out for before they even become an adult, it is possible to detect scale if you know what you're looking for. They start out looking like little tiny fluffy flecks that could also resemble mealybugs. Very, very small. It's almost like somebody threw white ash on your orchids. And sometimes they come across a little bit clustered or as a single number. You would really think, oh, leave it. You can wipe it away with your finger and you think it's just a fleck of dust. But that is a true sign of a crawler stage scale. I do not hesitate either way. If I see something that is not supposed to be on my orchid, I either wipe it away or I already go at it with garlic alcohol. But of course we know the adult scale with the hardened shell, the little fluffy things. If you take a live scale off with your fingernail, there's little fluffy white things underneath it, minute, microscopic, tiny. But because they're in such large numbers under that adult scale, you can see the white. Those are the crawlers. And that is the little white fluffy things that you would see if you haven't seen the adult scale. Another symptoms of scale is something that is clear. It's like a clear liquid that has landed on your leaf. It has a sticky texture to it. Sometimes when you feel it, you're like, where'd that come from? 
Look on the underside of the leaf above. Check that because it is possible that there's a bit of scale on the underside of the leaf above that sticky substance, and that is the honeydew. Scale produces honeydew, and it is not the happy sap of the orchid itself because happy sap always forms on the underside of a leaf, not on the surface of a leaf, especially when it comes to Phalaenopsis. So know that if you see that clear substance on a leaf, you can wipe that off. That's not a problem but look on the underside. And the thing is that if you don't wipe that clear sticky substance off, the next thing you will be attracting is sooty mold. It's a black kind of a residue. It looks like your orchid is dusty and dirty. That is sooty mold already starting on the orchid. And that is attracted by the sticky sweet substance of that honeydew that the scale will secrete. Another thing that is attracted if you see a large amount of ant activity around your orchid, Check for scale because the ants will also be attracted with that honeydew and then start to work in tandem with the scale, protecting the scale from any kind of other predator so that they can harvest that honeydew. And you will see that ants come up quite often with some of the pests I'm going to be talking about. Let's move on to the mealybugs because scale and mealybugs are pretty similar in their makeup except mealybugs are much, much easier to eradicate when you get to them in time but they do look very, very similar when they're young. Similar little white powdery speckles on your orchids, tucked away behind blooms, on petals, behind little sheaths of your spikes. Those are the babies of mealybugs before they start maturing into adults. They also have a very special relationship with ants. They also secrete a honeydew, and again, the ants like the honeydew. So if you see a lot of ant activity around an orchid, check it out. You might not see the clear sicky substance that I mentioned before on your leaves because mealybugs do not secrete as much as scale do. But if there's a lot of ants interested in that orchid, look a little bit further. It's not always that obvious as to where the mealybugs are, but really inspect closely if you need to get yourself a magnifying glass and check out all your structures, all the nooks and crannies of the orchid where ants are super interested. It is not always that ants and mealybugs or scale work in tandem, but sometimes that is exactly what is happening. Aphids, for example, they come in all kinds of shapes, sizes, and different colors. I've got green, I've got black, and I've had some really weird looking ones recently, but aphids are just a pain because they sit around on buds. And again, ants and aphids work in tandem as well. And the ants harvest the honeydew from the aphids. Aphids are a little bit more difficult to get rid of because of the fact that they're sitting on the buds. If you do go in with garlic alcohol, you can also destroy the fact that a bud can bloom out. Usually I just work at it with my fingers ever so often and do my best to get rid of aphids if an orchid is in bud. If it's not in bud, she gets a dousing of garlic infused alcohol. Now the next one that I had to deal with is moth larvae. In my climate, I've got moths certain time of year and they produce larvae all around. Doesn't matter if it's indoors or outdoors, it happens and they actually look like little maggots. They're not as common in some climates, but a headache here in my climate. They leave the exact same symptoms that you would see what thrips leaves behind and they move at night and have no difficulty reaching the lofty heights of any shelving unit. Slick walls are nothing to them and they will feed off the underside of the leaves where their teeth can secure themselves by using the stomata openings. Then they form a cocoon before that larvae emerges as a moth. The way to get rid of these guys is either you've already sprayed your orchid as a preventative measure with garlic infused alcohol or there are certain strips that also attract fungus gnats but in this case they are directed at moths specifically because they have moth pheromones on the sticky pad supposedly to attract the moths so that they can't actually reproduce and form larvae now the sticky pads i've used in the past they haven't been very successful Maybe I got a bad batch, but for moths, etc., if you've got that sort of a problem in your climate, get yourself some of those pheromone sticky pads to attract the moths and get them dealt with prior to them putting their eggs out anywhere in your collection, in your space. The moth larvae segues perfectly into thrips. Seeing as the symptoms are super similar and we only see the symptoms after the damage is done. And the damage being striations under the underside of the leaves. In my case, I've had that more on dendrobiums than I've had in any other 
orchid in my collection. It's funny how dendrobiums are also very unreceptive, let's say, of any kind of industrial systemic insecticide or pesticide. So I wonder if the thrips know a little more than we do. Treating dendrobiums with any kind of pesticide is always risky because the orchid will actually reject that. The leaves will fall off and the orchid can perish simply because of the chemical we have used in order to address the pest problem. And for that reason, the garlic infused alcohol has been a game changer for me because I can treat my dendrobiums without having to worry about any sort of secondary negative effects after a pest treatment. But thrips is one of those things that you can't see these guys. I don't even have a picture of them. They are tiny, tiny black little slivers looking like insects and they move lightning fast. Even if you're not close to the orchid, the minute there's a disturbance in the room, they're gone. So even inspecting an orchid, you won't see thrips until you see the damage of thrips. That includes deformed spikes and unfortunately buds because they are that tiny. If you ever see a thrip, it is like a little streak, a little black line. If you got the chance, it's a little bit shiny as well. It's kind of gross. It really is. You think you've got yourself a kind of a worm or something, but they're so, so small. It's, it's just gross when it moves. So another similar symptom to moth larvae and thrips is spider mites. But if you have spider mites, you will see the same kind of signs on the underside of leaves without any signs of curly lines. It's as if the cell structure looks dryish, very silvery, and always on the underside of the leaves. They love hot, dry conditions. I have been fortunate so far not to have any spider mite issues in my collection, considering how hot and dry my climate can be. But if you are suspicious of what you see under your leaves, wipe them with a white kitchen towel and see if you can detect orange or rusty looking residue on the surface of that kitchen towel or a cotton disc. And if so, you treat that for spider mites straight away. And the best thing to do straight away is to take the orchid and any orchid that is supposedly not infected but was in close proximity of the infected orchid and shower it. I mean really, really shower the orchid, the underside of the leaves, get the water into the media and wipe them down. This is not just wiping down with a cloth kind of a treatment. I mean this is really showering with abundant clean water and then apply the preventative treatment and the repellent treatment for spider mites. And if you have a very hot, dry climate that doesn't have much airflow, then add a humidifier. It is important because especially if you're an indoor grower and you don't have the ambient air to ward off further attacks or repeat attacks of spider mites, get the humidity up somehow in your environment. I personally do a lot of spraying during the summer with the hot, dry winds that I have. And my setup with Lekan self-watering provides kind of a microclimate around my pots. So that kind of helps within the vicinity of each orchid. But spider mites are super, super difficult. And once you have them, you have to be diligent to make sure that they don't become a permanent feature or worst case, if you cannot get a control of the infestation, unfortunately, the orchid would have to be discarded. Even surfaces need to be wiped off where there is an orchid with spider mites wiped cleaned and maintained in such an environment that they have no chance of returning while you are treating and showering the orchid on regular intervals to make sure that the orchid stays spider mite free. And then another pest that I have, and I'm not sure if you have, but caterpillars. I have caterpillars and they are not the same as moth larvae. Those are two different things. My little caterpillars are tiny, tiny little green creatures, and they will destroy spikes and leaves and little itty bitty new growths, especially again on dendrobiums. And if undetected, they are like the locust pest of the orchid hobby. And the worst thing with these guys is they forage at night. And at first, nothing looks out of place until buds drop or new growths look chomped or spikes get shorter by the day. By the time some of these symptoms can actually be seen and appreciated, they have matured to the final stage of adulthood or moved on to the next orchid. But there's one thing that you can look out for. If you're seeing something that is out of the norm on your orchid, check the surface around where the pot is. Caterpillars will leave little black droppings depending on the size of the caterpillars and mine are minute so the droppings they leave behind they are a little bit hard to the touch they are tiny 
tiny, but that will give you an indication you have a caterpillar problem. And then, if you can, at night, when it's dark, take a flashlight, take a magnifying glass, and see if you can't see the critters feasting on your orchid at night. I tried that, I still didn't see them, but that doesn't mean they weren't there, because I had the droppings. It only means that they had put themselves into a cocoon somewhere, moved on, matured into an adult, and they were gone. So be aware of the fact that some orchids can attract caterpillars, and you might think you've got a completely different pest. Check around the periphery of the pot and see if you can't see little black droppings to confirm that you actually do have caterpillars. Once they're gone, I mean, they're gone. So the problem in the long term takes care of itself, which is unfortunate because, well, the damage is then done. Okay, here's a fact that is unfortunate, and I'm going to put it out there. All pests are vectors for other diseases. They are cross-contaminators of the highest order and can spread viruses and fungi from one orchid to the other. If you think that you have a very, very healthy collection and your orchids aren't virused, they have no infections concerning any fungi, it doesn't mean the orchid doesn't have it. It just means that that orchid can grow and live and be vigorous with any kind of virus or fungi. But the next orchid down the line may not have that same resilience. So it is important when you see a pest or something to get ahead of it super, super quickly. Now, not every collection has the massive space that the orchids don't touch. I don't have that luxury during the winter. So I am inspecting my orchids every day, not every single one in great detail because I know my collection. I know what I'm looking at. So I can consider myself skimming through my collection and the orchids that I know that are more prone to scale or mealybugs, those get looked at very, very often, especially specific times of year where they don't have as much airflow as they would when they live outdoors for most of the year and they sit in a more humid, damp environment. So get to know your collection. Look at your orchids. Remember the little symptoms I was talking about. Some symptoms, unfortunately, only show after the damage is done but that is all part and parcel of getting to know your orchid and being ready and armed for future attacks. If you're still here, thank you so very, very much. <laughs> it's not a pleasant subject, but it is one of the very, very important subjects for us as growers of orchids, and we don't want them to be taken out by a pest if we can avoid it. So let me just say, I know the answer to this question, but it's always like, why are you on my orchid when you've got the great outdoors, enjoy yourself there. You won't get zapped by me. What are you doing attacking my orchids? And the answer is they also like warm, moist, humid environments. And if there isn't enough airflow, even better. They will come in with the air and they will stay if there's not enough airflow and they will perpetuate themselves and build a little colony. So they love exactly the conditions that we provide for our orchids and they'll be quite happy to stick around. What amazes me though, is when I see that there are pest problems as well in collections that are grown exclusively indoors in a separate grow room in controlled conditions. I know this is naive, but it always amazes me that these mm, get into those spaces as well. I mean, for me, granted, I grow mainly outdoors and 99% of the time my terrace door, even in my grow space, is open day in, day out. So I'm inviting the problem in. It's like saying to a vampire, please come in. You know, a vampire can't come into your home, or so I've been told, unless you invite it in. These pests, they don't need an invitation. <laughs> Just open the door. <laughs> But in a closed environment, I am always amazed how they get in and then they cause a problem. I would have thought that any closed, controlled indoor environment, not including greenhouses, but, you know, in your home, in your spare room, that those environments should be safe, but they're not. So don't be fooled in case you're starting a collection that, well, I'm going to grow indoors. You know, I'm not going to risk my orchids being outside because of the pests. They will find your pests. So getting armed, getting ready, getting informed, looking for the symptoms are all things that will protect you and your orchids from having any headaches and losing buds and spikes. And that is why right at the beginning, I didn't want to overwhelm anybody. And that is why I said garlic infused alcohol. If you are not sure which pesticide or insecticide to buy off the shelf, start with 
garlic infused alcohol. You will be happy to do so. You will have the confidence that you are in control and you're ready. And if anything should get worse or should happen that you need to go into more heavy armory, then by all means inform yourself locally what is legal in your country to use on your plants. But if you are not sure, I cannot recommend it enough to use garlic infused alcohol. I promise you, after many, many years of having an arsenal in the cupboards, all that has been discarded and I'm now just using garlic infused alcohol. Now I know I spoke quite a long time, but I'm hoping that some beginners will watch this video because you get your orchid in and then the problems come afterwards. And part of the research, in my opinion, with regard to this hobby, because it is quite pricey, is also to understand what you are up against when it comes to any kinds of pests. Because you're buying in an orchid, you've paid your money, you're starting your collection, and you've got all the kit and caboodle, you're ready to rock and roll, and suddenly things start to happen and you're always playing catch up. And in my opinion, there is no need for that. Even the doctors say prevention is the best cure. So with that, if you have any questions, if you have any symptoms on your orchids that you are not sure of, if you have anything that I brought up that you are questioning, I really, really encourage comments and a continuation of the dialogue in the comments. I speak of what I know in my environment, from my history, I cannot foresee the future, but there's one thing I can do is help you out so that you don't have to encounter some of the issues, deal with them and figure them out for yourself. You can get a head start when it comes to pest prevention, symptoms, what to look out for, signs and treatment. <laughs> really appreciate your time watching. I wish you a beautiful day. That one condition remains though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.